Almost everything in biology is structure. I mean, even function is a product of the structure. You need to know how the parts are arranged in space, how they fit together. It's the insight into mechanism um, is how things are arranged, typically cause and effect, pathology, genetic diversity, diversity between different species. All of this is revealed um, when you get to uh, high enough resolution. What limits our progress in biological, biomedical sciences, it's the uh, technologies. Science takes a big leap forward every time there's a new technology. So what's next for spatial biology is multi-omics in situ. So um, DNA, RNA, protein all at once, together with the cell lineage. In situ gives you, it's relative to what? Relative to single cell, relative to microscopy without sequencing. So it, it combines all the best features of each. It allows you to get to subcellular uh, resolution. It allows you to do connectomics or say it, one nerve is connected to another. That information is typically lost when you do a single cell analysis. Similarly, when you do microscopy with a few colors, you lose the richness of identifying all the features inside of a, a cell. So in particular, when you do in situ sequencing, you now basically have every DNA, RNA, and protein molecule can have a tag uh, that you can access either randomly or in a targeted way. What could be the impact of new in situ methodologies? For one thing, it, it, it will allow us to identify all the parts and start addressing pathologies, how basic cellular functions go awry in infections. And then the future is also in terms of population variations, what it is that makes you different from me, why it is that uh, one person can handle the same disease that kills another person. So that resilience is something that, that uh, we'd like to understand and harness um, so, that, so that one lucky person can make the entire human race lucky by revealing the mechanism. That's why in C2.